Hello, everyone. Are you ready? Three, two, one. We've got a special surprise for you today. Ah, it's my face. Welcome to the Thursday webinar. I'm trying to look right in your eyes. And the key to this webinar is if I look at myself, then I'm not looking at you, right? Just wanted to say hello. It's about time we got to know each other face to face. And this is in my temporary little office for the summer. I'm going to build maybe a big set behind me, maybe put a big Roger Federer poster up. Mm, wouldn't that be good? But this is me in my tennis gear, right? There, you know what I look like. As I told in the little pre-webinar banter, had a little tennis lesson today, half hour, very hard, hard work doing a half hour lesson. But I'm in my athletic attire and we're going to talk about some robots today, all right? So nice to meet you. You might see my face again. Won't that be excited? But now it's time to go away. Bye-bye. All right, back to the webinar. We're going to talk today about would you trade this? I'm going to give you some stats. I'm going to talk about a robot. And you are going to decide. You're going to have a long talk with yourself about would you trade this robot. And if you don't do a good job, I'm going to put my big head back on the screen and yell at you. Right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Someone just said I'm nuts in the question box. Um, I refuse to believe that. Just don't call me who I think you're going to call me. Anyway, let's get started with the webinar. I'm minimizing the questions box, and let's get started. Um, by the way, just letting you know, the new fair value page is coming soon to my website, and it will be public. Public. It'll be public for everyone. I've just compiled a bunch of stats on the fair value system, the fair value robots. Um, and a few other things. So that's going up hopefully in the next by the weekend. So that'll be fun to look at. So there you go. Nothing else to announce. All right. Why wouldn't we trade this? All right. Let's talk about this. Okay. Let's take a look at what goes into deciding not to or to 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 trading something. All right. The first thing you might want to consider, all right, especially if I'm a stranger, which I am. Don't call me strange. Stranger. But if someone came to you and said, hmm, I've got a system for you, huh? You might think, well, how much time have you spent on it? Or maybe that doesn't matter to you. Does that matter to you? Does it matter if something's been thoroughly researched? Or is it just, meh, whatever. You know, if you've studied the last four months, I'm fine with that. All right? These are the things you need to know, all right? Now, for me, personally, let's do the math, all right? Let's add it up, okay? In 2012, I fell in love with robots about 2011, right at the end, okay? I thought, how great would this be to be a robot trader? How great would it to be to get all of the perks of trading and yet not have to watch your computer screen, right? I am very much, I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm being arrogant and delusional, but I'm very much like Billy Bean and Moneyball. Have you ever read that Moneyball book by uh, Michael Lewis? He loves putting together teams, he loves winning, he loves research, and he hates watching the games. I, I realize that is exactly me. I love everything about trading except actually sitting on the screen and pressing buttons or actually watching the trades. I love setting all this up. I could research all the live long day. <laughs> I love saying that. But I don't particularly care. Like I don't like to look in on my robots. I do. I don't like it, though. I just want it to be over. Tell me how they did and we'll move on and I'll do more research, okay? So anyway, I love researching, but I thought when I discovered robots late in 2011, I thought this would be great, okay? Other people, family members, friends, also thought it was great, and they thought, hey, let's get some money together and you trade it with robots. So back in 2012, I was under the gun, right? I had investors and family waiting. They said, here, I'm gonna give you a bunch of money, I want to take $2,000 a month out of it. You figure something out. Ah, right? I like robots, but I didn't know if I was ready for that, right? I didn't even know how to code. I didn't know anything about testing. I didn't know what drawdown was. So <laughs> imagine the hours I spent. Now, I was doing tennis full-time back then also, but I had already started, started cutting down my hours. So I was only on the court maybe, you know, not that much, right? Back in the day, I was on the courts, you know, eight, ten hours a day, but that wasn't the case then. So I spent every waking hour not on the court testing robots. So let's go, let's just say, all right, let's do some math. If I started in 2012, around May, I don't remember the day it was, but it wasn't May, but let's just say it's May. 
And I worked every hour I was off the court. So if I went, if I had a lesson, because I work mostly with kids, so I worked in the afternoon. So I would get up early, have my breakfast, and then work on robots all the way up to, let's say, 1, 2 o'clock p.m., okay? Then I went to the court and did my stuff and came home. And then at, when I came home, I'd do a couple hours there. Or if I was off the court, if I had a break, right, between 6 and 8 p.m., maybe I had a break, I'd do robot testing. So think about that, right? All morning, maybe during a break, and night, okay? Weekends, I took one day off. I worked six days a week. I worked seven days a week most of my career, or beginning of my career, but I worked six days a week. On my day off, guess what I did? I plopped myself in my trading chair and I did testing all day long, all right? So that's just a little story, just a little background. And I guess what, I haven't stopped. <laughs> I've been testing robots. I love testing robots, even the ones I already have, trying to improve them, whatever, right? It was about three hours a day, average every day, seven days a week, right? Because some days was seven hours, some days was one hour, some days were three, some days were four. I think it's a conservative guess to say I've spent about three hours a day, right? And I still spend way more than that on some days. All right, so three hours a day times 360 days, which is not even a full year. I gave myself five days off, even though pretty much I do it even on the holidays or whatever. And then five years from now, like 2012 to 2017, guess how many hours that is? Ha, huh, it's on the screen. 5,400 hours, okay? That's about the time. That's an approximation, but that's a guess. Is that enough? Would you trust something that's been looked at for 5,400 hours? All right, let's say I didn't. Let's say I'm being way egotistical. And let's cut that in half, an hour and a half a day. I mean, I do more than an hour and a half a day of robot, but whatever. That's still 2,700 hours. Is that enough? All right? I'm just letting you know. If I talk about something and hours matter, now you're in the ballpark. All right? So that's just a little, you know, a little rough glance. Okay. Well, another thing that may stop you from trading a system, especially a robot, is the number problem, right? The problem with testing is that you can play around with the numbers until it looks good. I remember when I very first got started with optimizing, and I optimized it, and I optimized it, and it kept getting better and better and better, and I had a feeling of joy and ecstasy coursing through my body because I'm like, is that all it takes? And of course, it's not all it takes because it's called curve fitting. If you just take the last four months of data and then start testing it, right, just, I mean, up to today, today, back to four months ago, and test and test and test, you will come up with the best thing you've ever seen that will make you a millionaire in about 42 minutes, okay? Well, that's not enough, okay? That's just not enough data. And furthermore, you're just optimizing it for the last four months, right? If trading every day was the same as four months ago, that would work great but the markets are always changing, so it doesn't work great, right? So how do we solve that problem of curve fitting? Well, you could have a whole bunch more trades, right? If you just test a few months or recently, you might get 20 trades. I don't know, 30 trades. Depend, if you're trading a daily chart, maybe one trade. You can stop the curve fitting madness simply without doing any in sample, out of sample, without even looking at that or walk forward, optimize, without any of that. Just have a bunch of trades, right? Okay. Statistical advantage shows that if the bigger the numbers that you test, the better you'll do. Okay, well, how much is enough? That was always my question. Okay, well, you say get a lot of trades. How much? Well, I ask and I look around and some optimizers or testers say, there's never enough trades. Oh, great. That doesn't help me. Other places I've heard 300 trades each way. So there you go. Write that down. Nobody's writing that down. That's okay. I don't expect you to write it down. Write that down, 300 trades each way, long and short. So 300 long, 300 short is a good number. That is was told to me who's by someone who's been in the testing business for a long time. I paid him for his time, asked him the question, and that's what he told me, okay? So take that for what it's worth, all right? That's 600. I've also heard from other people, interviews, research, whatever, that 1,000 trades is a good number. If you get 1,000 trades, you're pretty much good. You can pretty much predict that it's going to go that way in the future, okay? So how many of it? How many do you think? I've, I've given you some possible opinions, right? Well, while you're thinking about that, what if a trading system had 2,000 trades, right? We've heard 600. We've heard 1,000. Well, what if I showed you a system or anyone showed you a system with over with 2,000 or more? What do you think of that? Is that enough? Would you turn that one down? I'm just curious. I mean, just asking. Don't don't feel like you have to answer now. Don't answer now. Okay? It's, it's fine. 
Well, let's talk about the platform problem. And this is a very serious problem. What does it matter if you're testing something on data that isn't any good or didn't happen? Doesn't matter if we test something if that's not actually the data, right? I mean, that's ridiculous, right? Doesn't work that way, okay? And MT4, which I have much maligned as a testing platform, and others have too. Well, let's talk about MT4, right? Because that's what my robots trade on. So I gotta get to know it. When you test with MT4, if you're not aware, you get a little number in the upper right hand screen, right hand side of your screen that says. Data is 90%, I don't even know what it says, 90% accurate, I don't know what it says, but it gives you a number. Um, I've heard from people um, in webinars in various places, I said, you can get data from Dukascopy, I don't even know how to say that, Dukascopy, that's 99% accurate, okay, that's great. Well, what about data that's 80% accurate? Is that good enough? I mean, mine's 90%, I just take the stain, I don't do any, I don't get, I don't import any data in my MT4, I just use whatever I get, okay? And when I, my report, I get 90% or higher, right? Sometimes I get an NA, which allegedly is 90% or higher. Don't correct me. I don't care. That's, I have also gotten other tests where it's 90%. So we're just saying 90%. Okay. Is that good enough? I mean, is 99.9% .9 the only thing I should test on? Should I throw out every single thing that's 90%-ish? Something to think about, right? All right. Continuing on MT4. MT4, as it's even been pointed out to me by various people, that it doesn't account for the weekend trades properly. I mean, it doesn't. If you look on your chart and you have a gap from Friday to Sunday, and we've seen those lately, it takes the profit target out exactly. So if it gaps up 100 pips in your direction, it only gives you like 10 or 20 or whatever your robot's set for, right? And my robots are always set for mostly a pretty small profit target. So your testing will look at, oh, you only got 14 pips and you got 100. Well, I mean, that's a good problem, but obviously, what if it gaps the wrong way? And what if your stop loss is 50 pips? Well, it'll tell you it, you only lost 50 pips, but you didn't. It got bigger than that, you lost 100. Well, that's not in your testing, so the numbers are off, right? MT4 doesn't really do weekends right. Guess what? TradeStation does them perfectly, but MT4 does not. So the numbers are off, right? So what? What do we do? We give it up? Throw it in the toilet, what do we do, right? Well, think about this. Doesn't it go both ways if MT4 is wrong, right? Won't it account for a target too small as well as a stop that's bigger, the example I just gave? I mean, over the series of X amount of trades, it's going to shortchange you some on your profit target. That's good, right? We actually made more. And it's also going to only stop you out for a target or a stop loss and the actuality, it was worse. So some trades are going to be worse and some trades are going to be better. Is that not going to even out? Isn't it? I mean, logic would dictate, yes, it's going to even out, but you don't have to trust that. You could just say, nope, not accurate. I refuse to believe any MT4 results ever for the rest of time. Okay. What if we have, assuming this problem, what if we have a ton of trades? What if we have 2,000 trades? There's not going to be that many weekend trades, but there are going to be there. Is that enough? We believe it then? Just asking, right? Well, what if you have platform confirmation? Well, what does that mean? All right. TradeStation's data, and I started in TradeStation, well, I don't even know when it was, 2011-ish. I mean, it's been for a long time, all the way up until they stopped doing Forex. And I still have the platform, and I still look at stocks and futures and all that. All right. TradeStation's data, Forex data, comes from one source. Right? You don't have to input from Dukascopy, which I love saying. You don't have to import from anywhere. It comes with one source. It's reliable. Um, how do I know it's reliable? Because I've watched like a hawk. I watched every single live trade I took, and we're looking at hundreds. Well, let's talk about it. It's thousands of trades. What does a testing trade look like? What does a real-life trade look like? I'm just telling you, TradeStation was awesome. What happened in past happened in real life. It was identical in almost every way, okay? So I found TradeStation to be reliable. Trust me, don't trust me, whatever you want to do. I'm just telling you, <laughs> I would bet all of my money on it, okay? So let's just, will you please just trust me for five seconds? All right, you trust me, all right? And once I learned the trading costs after watching thousands of trades and saying, okay, testing said I made $4, I actually made 432. 
or testing says I made 400, I made 432, whatever it is, right? So I was able to get the trading cost for each particular currency pair and it matched up and my real life results were always slightly better than my testing results. It was fantastic. And then of course, TradeStation went away. Okay, now it's gone. I can't trade Forex on it. So how then does trustworthy TradeStation match up with MT4, MT4 and all of its warts? Well, let's take a look. And we're going to talk about the Hornet, which is cruel because it's only available to lifetime members. But, of course, times are changing, and it's good for an example anyway. Okay. Oh, no. Where is it? Let's get – oh, there it is. Never mind. No no, no need to uh, – oh. Here is the dollar-yen Hornet 15-minute chart from 2003 to 2017. Okay. This is TradeStation. And this is a very small trade size, one mini lot, 0 0.1 lots. There's your profit. Yay, 4,400. There's a number of trades, 1,353. Nice winning percentage. I like that. What's the max drawdown? Negative $176. Hmm, those numbers look fantastic. Maybe why I trade it. Let's take a look at the graph. I mean, it doesn't win all the time. There are drawdowns. But you can see we have a nice left to right equity curve, right? That matches up with pretty much everything I've seen. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, back to the numbers. There's the years, all winning years. Okay, satisfied? Looking good? Trustworthy data? Let's take a look. Here is the exact same chart. Dollar yen, 15 minute Hornet, built for MT4. Let's look at the numbers. There's your little green, right, in the modeling quality, NA or whatever. Sometimes it says 90%, sometimes it says NA, whatever. Let's look at the profit. Total net profit. 38.82. Well, that's pretty close, but not quite, right? It's a little bit less. Okay. Well, you know that's not too bad. Maximum drawdown negative 199. Maximum drawdown negative 176. All right. Empty four, a little worse, but um, very similar, right? Can we agree on that? And total number of trades 13.07. Total number of trades 13.53. And real quick, winning percentage, about 78%, about 76%, and back over here, we're at 78%. All right. Why aren't they exactly the same? Because indicators are calculated differently on every platform. You cannot make them the same. So when you have different indicators over time, it's, going, it's not going to match up perfectly, and one platform is going to take a trade and one isn't. And that particular trade is going to win or it's going to lose and blah, blah, blah. But... Am I crazy? This is darn close, right? I am absolutely positively fine with that. You can be absolutely not fine with that, but I'm just saying it's darn close, okay? Now, back to the slides. So what's the verdict? They're almost identical, and that's with that 90%. So that crappy 90%, it's not 99.9%. .9%, it's only about 90 or NA, whatever you want to call it. It's got all the other flaws, the weekend flaws, whatever, but they're extremely identical. Oh, I didn't show. Let's look at the graph. Hmm. Does that graph look like that graph? Little level out and up. Little level out and up. Hmm. Kind of similar, right? Okay. This makes it kind of interesting, does it not? It makes it food for thought, right? If we can agree that the results are pretty darn similar, and if you disagree, then you don't have to listen anymore, but I think, I think they are pretty similar, then what do you make of this? If I presented this to you, here is the heron, which I made as a little friend to the hornet. It's the first day trading one of this style that I'm going to be making public. Okay, Lifetime members get it for free, of course. All right, here's the heron MT4 from 2006 to now. Well, it had no losing years, just like the Hornet did. Excellent. This is MT4 stuff, see, MT4. The hair and MT4 profit. Now, it was trading more lots, so you have more profit, but it's 58.56. Excellent. And the trade number is over 2,000. So the Heron has actually more trades than the Hornet. And I have been trading the Hornet untouched since 2014, and it has behaved just like the testing. So far, that could all change, right? Who knows what the future brings? 
but this has even more traits. So does that make it more reliable? Does it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we look at the Hornet trait station versus MT4, those were nearly identical. So could we assume that if we had the Heron on trait station, it would be the same? I, rhetorical question. I'm just asking. And would you trade it? Right? Do you trust trade station? Transitive property A equals B, B equals C, C equals G. I made that up. That's not how it goes. But would you accept that as to be proper enough to trade? All right. Don't answer yet. Consider this. I added things to the Heron um, that were super special because I'm learning how to code and put stuff together on MT4. The additions I made to the Heron were not available on the Hornet because I had the Hornet programmed for me. And I don't know how to do it in Trade Station's code. Not exactly. There is a twist to the Heron, which I love, that I just don't know how to do on Trade Station yet. Okay. So, nonetheless, I built the Heron on Trade Station from the code I do know how. And it's a little bit simpler. It doesn't have quite the twist or quite the detail of the Heron MT4. Okay, I'm just telling you. Otherwise, they're identical. There's one major twist that made it different that allowed the Heron MT4 to take more full profits. The one I built on Trade Station gets out earlier sometimes and profits are less. Okay, but otherwise, the framework is exactly the same. The philosophy is exactly the same. Okay, so how does that Trade Station, since we trust Trade Station, how does that compare? Well, it was less, but I already told you that the Heron MT4 takes more full profit, so it's understandable that this made more money. However, Trade Station 2006 to now, no losing years. 2006 to now, no losing years. Profit, profit, just not as much. Trade Station trade number set only 1766. MT4 took more, and that goes again to the discrepancy between the indicators and the codes. It's not quite the same. Plus, when I built it, there, there are trades in Trade Station um, that just didn't fire off. I couldn't figure out a way. It's not as sensitive. I don't know how to explain it without being annoying or boring. <laughs> but this just didn't. I couldn't get it to take as many trades, and I couldn't get it to get its full target. I just couldn't quite figure it out. But like I said, the framework was the same. So there are reasons why, and it had to do with the coding. There are reasons why this just took more. It's more sensitive, right? It's a little bit more detailed. Again, okay, they're not exact. There is different code, and it was much harder to do it on Trade Station. And the MT4 takes full profits, as I said, but they're both nicely profitable, right? They both make money, no losing years, reasonably close. I mean, this is still more than the Hornet, right? This still seems like something I would trade, just not as good as the MT4 version. We know why. They're both profitable, even though that's slightly different. How do you feel about that? More confident? Less confident? Is that good enough? Bad enough? All right, let's talk about this. Summarize it up. The Heron since 2006, all right, and this is MT4 stuff. No losing years, we said that. There's your profit. Minus 406 drawdown, that's a 14.4. I was told once that a two to one ratio, profit to max drawdown is good. This is 14.4. Now it's only since 2006. If you go back even further, to 2003, which I don't know how relevant 2003 is to now, but if you did, that profit to drawdown ratio goes soaring over 20, right? So it's good since 2006. The more data you put in, it gets even better, right? Profit factor, 1.53. I've traded stuff and watched stuff walk forward from about 1.2 and up profit. I know that's not big, and I know you want your profit factor to be a million. I'm just telling you with my own eyes about 1.2 was profitable in real time, okay? So I like it over 1.2. You can have whatever you want. This profit factor was 1.53, but again, if you go back to 2003, it got over 1.6. So the more data I put in, the better it got, which is, I think, a good thing, all right? And like I said, that's in the range of things I work with. 31 wins in a row was the max. That's pretty good. I like winning streaks, right? That's similar to Hornet. We know that the Euro Aussie, blah, you know why I say blah, but the Euro Aussie can go through big streaks too, right? And you're at a 74% win win rate, right? Which is similar to what we saw in the Hornet, maybe a little less. Over 2,000 trades, we saw that. Good equity curve, very similar, right? So what do you think, right? 
yes, it's in that 90% data, but we know that it's similar to another platform that has every reason to make us believe it's reliable, right? And TradeStation is similar, even though the code has differences. But it's almost the same, and the philosophy is exactly the same. So who says no? Who would look at something like this and say, no, I don't trust it, right? Is it because I didn't put the time in, right? And again, this can, doesn't have to be me, anyone. Anyone who's putting something up online, what makes you go for the green light? What makes you green light it and go, right? So who says no to that, right? What does it take for you to buy into a trading system, right? What if you did all this research and you presented this to yourself? That's what I do, right? I research it and then I say, do you, will I trade this? If you came up with this for yourself, would, that, would you get in? If you laid out the case that I just laid out, would you? What does it take for you to say yes? Or what does it take for you to say no and turn it down, right? This is a huge point that I want you to consider. And, it's, and that is the point of today's webinar. When you do your testing, that's all well and good. But what is going to make you say yes? Or what is going to make you say no? Right now, if all of this, like I said, the heron is going live in public starting next week, and I'm going to put these results online. I've never been a fan of my FX book, but I've come around and I'm going to do it. I've already opened up account. It's already trading live. If you do say no, if you think, well, this is poppycock, then you'll be able to see me fail live, right? I'm just going to fail right in front of your face. It'll just suck and it'll be glorious for you. It'll be fantastic. Or we'll see if the data holds up. Maybe it'll be not as good. Maybe it will. But the bottom line is it is good enough for me, so I'm going to put my money on it. But the point of today's webinar is, is it good enough for you? All right? Take a look at some questions. I hope there's a lot of requests for me to come back on the webcam. Um, let's see what it, here, what we got. Was all this when you were single? No. <laughs> that is awesome. No, Talon. I was... Uh, Jill is my uh, trading partner and partner partner. No, absolutely. She would, uh, they, like her daughter or whatever, kids would come over, and they'd just go out to the mall, and I'd sit there in my trading chair and trade. I mean, they were in on it too. Like, everyone was on board. Like, I had to figure out these robots, so they just accepted the fact that I would sit there in the afternoons. And then I'd, I'd give family time. But yeah. The, Daniel says, says, 11 years of trading represent real or simulated trades. Well, I started this research in 2012, so definitely not live. Um, I started walking stuff forward, sometimes trading it, sometimes not, right? I've been learning in real time in front of you, so I started my blog in 2013. I, all of my Hornet robots have not been touched since 2014. So if I talk hypothetical results, that is slippage built in, trading costs built in, and untouched, unoptimized to make it look good for you. It's just been sitting on my computer, and I've been watching it every day since. So to me, that's live trading, right? But it's not because it didn't go in my account. Um, it's perfectly good enough for me, but I'm also, if it's not good enough for you, it's fine with me. <laughs> Jeez, Doug says, bring that bad boy on. So is copying possible on my FX book? Um, again, I'm new to my FX book, but the answer, I believe, is yes. Um, they make you go through a three-month waiting period, is my understanding, and I'm, you know, the research I've done on it. Um, you can copy my trades or whatever um, if, it does, if it goes the way we want it to. Um, you can copy, uh, but they make me trade for three months. That, I don't know if that's true. I, I totally am naive. I just know that my account is finally working. Andrew says, next webinar, put a comparison between the Hornet versus the Heron. Um, well, maybe I will, Andy. Maybe I won't. Oh, you're a, um, a lifetime member, so you get the best of every world. Aren't you special? You make me feel so inadequate. I'm just kidding, of course. Um, well, Doug asked how many pairs. The answer is one. <gasps> but that's all in the course, right? And I'm recording the course. Uh, already. Actually, I'm almost done with the course. So you'll find all the details out next week. Um, Daniel, since 2012, and Jonathan has a smiley face, and Andrew says, I am special, and you are. From when again was the program left to its own code? Oh, um, well, some 2013. Um, most, almost all of the Hornets are 2014. I made one adjustment on the Euro Aussie where I stopped doing timed exits, and that was in the last 12 months. 
but the every other variable has been the same since 2014. When I talked about the slingshot robots the other day, that was 2012, actually 2011 slash 12, and that has been untouched since then. Um, so they've been untouched a long time. Talon says, uh oh, oh no, Douglas is going to make fun of me, and I don't care. I'll come right back on. Douglas, I came right. Look at me. I'm yelling at you. Don't you make fun of me? All right, I'm gone again. Sorry. I, that was that was for Douglas, everyone. Nobody else. I'm not yelling at anybody else. Uh, Douglas says the the one pair is a secret. Yes, it's a secret, Douglas. Of course, but next Wednesday it won't be. Uh, when will you start testing hair on other pairs? I've already started, but the focus is going to be one at a time. You know how I love focus. So, um, but yes, I've already started that. Daniel says last three years is about right for ultra. Yeah, about last three, 14, 15, 16, yeah, and half of 17. So it's been a while. <laughs> Andrew says I scared the crap out of him. <laughs> uh, thank you, Douglas, very much. I know Andrew's just kidding. All right, everyone, let's wrap it up. Um, book is done. We've talked about that. Whatever. Um, Heron is up. Uh, I'm going to share my effects. All of that stuff is going to be. I'm going to all the my effects book, the trading, whatever. Um, the course is coming out. Lifetime members get it free. Blah blah blah. You'll be able to follow along. We can talk about this. Uh, you'll see me love it, hate it, make corrections if necessary. I don't plan on making any corrections, but you'll be able to follow along. And I am really, really excited about this. So anyway, because of all this excitement, the trend following course, even though I'm practically done with it, is going to be delayed a bit. So I apologize for that. Um, all the research is done. All the uh, notes are there. The videos are partially done. It'll be coming out, but I don't want two, two things to come out at once. So that'll be coming. Um, that's I haven't given up on that. And of always, I'd love to have feedback and whatever else. Um, we're actually over, that's a lie, we're over 700 now on YouTube. Now that I showed my face, I, I can't imagine how big this is going to get. Now that you've seen me and my big stupid head, I'm probably going to have 8 million YouTube followers now, and I'm so excited about that. There's the contact information, everyone. We'll be back next week, hopefully in my tennis garb. I'll see you then. Bye for now.